<laughs> All right, we're just going to read the script. Okay, go. All right, hello and welcome back. Today we are joined live in the studio with Miss Abby Bossback. Abby, thank you for being here today to share a little bit about your uh, philosophy on education reform. Uh, why don't we start off this podcast uh, with you discussing uh, the current problem in the American educational system that directed you to your reform. Okay. The one leading problem within the educational system directing me to my reform was the issue that we have a plethora of inexperienced first-year teachers. When I say inexperienced, I mean they just haven't had enough field experience in the classroom before they enter into their first year of teaching. I believe that the teachers themselves aren't to blame, but it's currently that the curriculum and process they take to become a licensed teacher is to blame. In the state of Indiana, teachers are required a 10-week, at least, student teaching experience where they work and learn under another teacher. They are included into the classroom. They not only observe the teacher, but they also create and get to plan and teach their own lessons. It's a really important time for future teachers to gain experience, perfecting their practice, learning different management techniques and strategies, and also just gaining confidence as a teacher. Yeah, yeah. However, I'm arguing that they aren't getting enough time in the classroom before they take over their own. Ten weeks is simply not enough time. In fact, a 2004 public agenda survey found that 85% of teachers believe that new teachers are unprepared for dealing with behavior problems in the classroom. Furthermore, research published in a book called Supporting Beginning Teachers found that student achievement tends to be significantly worse in the classrooms of first-year teachers. Another problem in the American education system is that teachers aren't getting enough experience teaching in different school systems. And this, since there is currently no requirement in the state of Indiana as to where student teachers have to do their practice, they can do them anywhere. It's a known fact we have a teacher shortage in America and in Indiana. Teachers are struggling to find jobs, and most first-year teachers will end up taking a job wherever they can get one. And most of them end up in urban schools or impoverished schools wherever they can get one. In the article, Urban and Rural Staffing Challenges, Lainey Dunn argues this claim. Dunn argues that suburban schools are often perceived as better schools, and they usually have access to more resources than rural or urban schools. This makes them more attractive to many teachers and principals. In many rural and urban communities, there is limited pipeline of people who have the qualifications and experience to teach or lead schools in their own community. Improving the educational opportunities and outcomes for students will help better prepare Prepare them to pursue various college and career options, including teaching and administration. If we want to really address the issue, we want to build the next generation of teachers and leaders from within. Many teachers will student teach or do field experience in suburban communities, unaware of the challenges and work that urban schools require. This is a clear problem. With many first-year teachers going into urban schools without any experience, it's no wonder why they're struggling their first year, with 15% of individuals leaving the profession within their first year of teaching according to the book, Supporting Beginning Teachers. Very, very interesting. Now, now, do you have any personal links uh, to, to your reform? Actually, I do. Oh, tell me all about it. I've been blessed um, with numerous opportunities of classroom experience through job shadowing, uh, being an assistant teacher, field experience, and subbing. Took a year off my schooling and education program and worked from home as a teaching assistant for a year. But I genuinely feel like during this time, I learned more through that year of assistant teaching than I have my entire three years combined at Ball State. Wow. Teachers took me under their wing and let me lead lessons in small groups. I learned various assessment tools and classroom management techniques because I was able to have the hands-on classroom experience. Basically, I was learning as I was going. It made me a firm believer in that the more experience you have, the better teacher you are. I feel as though I'm very much ahead of my other colleagues who have not had the same amount of classroom experience, and I really want that for them. I want every teacher to feel as prepared as possible when they enter student teaching and when they enter their first years of teaching. I think that as teachers, we only need so much coursework. How many times do I need to learn about phonics in three different classes for three years? Teach me what phonics is in the classroom setting for one class. That's all I need. And then show me how to incorporate phonics into my classroom. And then allow me to plan it into instruction and allow me to use it into my two years of student teaching. There are so many benefits to actually 
putting these education concepts and curriculum into practice, but it has to be for more than 10 weeks or a little field experience here and there for an hour. No wonder why we have teachers quit after one year or cry every day their first year. It's not that they're not cut out for the job. It's that they're not prepared for the job. Yeah, that's uh, definitely not a good situation. So next question. Uh, what problems and issues have resulted because teachers aren't getting enough field experience or teaching in those urban schools, like you say? Well, then, there are many issues that have resulted because teachers aren't getting enough field experience during mm. their pre-teaching years. Elaborate on that, please. First off, teaching is a notably hard job. It requires dedication and effort to become a highly effective teacher. Most students don't even realize the amount of work that goes into being a teacher because they've never experienced the amount of work during their pre-teaching years. They are shocked as a first-year teacher because they weren't prepared for the amount of work they're required to do. Thus, they may question if this was even the right career choice for them, and then many of them often quit. Teachers aren't fully prepared during their first year of teaching. Teaching requires a ton of experience, and many would argue you can never fully prepare for it until you do it. Many first-year teachers lack knowledge of classroom management and routine. It takes a lot of practice and experience to figure out what type of routine and instruction you want to implement. You can be taught many different practices and strategies for proper classroom management in your courses, but until you do it and practice them for yourself on real kids, you can never truly know which ones you want to implement in your own cl classroom or which ones are even successful. Another issue with student teaching is the time that it occurs. In the state of Indiana, it is only required that teachers have at least 10 weeks of student teaching. Usually this lasts one semester long and either goes from August to December or January to May. For most pre-service teachers, they will finish out their bachelor degrees in the spring term from January to May student teaching. Thus, they really never get to see how a classroom starts at the beginning. They get to see classroom management already in place, but never see how it started back in August. And then when they get hired in August for their first teaching position, they feel overwhelmed and unprepared because they were never taught or shown how to start a classroom. I sat down today and interviewed two elementary teachers to tackle this issue and get their opinions on the matter. One teacher is three years out of college and is in their third year of teaching. The other teacher has 20 years of experience and is currently working on a master's degree in administration. They were both asked the same questions, and I documented their answers. The first question I asked was to think back about college and what you learned, how you felt about teaching before you got your first job. The teacher of three years basically said she was terrified and that she didn't know what to expect. She was very timid. Um, nothing in, she learned in college could have ever prepared her for the first day in her own classroom. She said she was so thankful to have a mentoring team that took her under her wing to show her the ropes. The teacher of 20 years said the same thing as a teacher of three years, that she was extremely nervous. Um, even though she had spent some time in the classroom for student teaching, the only other experience was through a little bit of time at Burris, and she really didn't have any other classroom experiences, which was led to her being nervous. The second question I asked was, did you implement a lot of instruction you were taught in college your first year of teaching? The teacher of three years says that if she was being 100% honest, no. She felt like a lot of what is taught in college was a perfect world situation. She said that she was glad to know how to be taught how to do reading assessments or understand special education testing processes, but her student teaching placements were definitely the most helpful in transitioning her to her first year of teaching. She said learning from real-world teachers who were currently in classrooms seemed to prepare her the best. It showed her what she liked about the room and what she didn't like about the room. The teacher of 20 years says, even though it was so long ago, she can only remember implementing one thing that she learned from student teaching. And she also didn't have confidence to deviate from the plan at all. She really stayed close to teaching manuals and followed the lead of the teachers and the grade level that she was assigned. The third question was, what is one area you were weak in your first year of teaching? The teacher of three years said that her first weakness was her classroom management. She was very hard to come off too rude or too mean, but after a few months she felt more comfortable. The teacher of 20 years said she had two weak areas, one being that her undergrad didn't include much on how to teach writing, but her second weakest area was the knowledge of how a classroom was run all together. She remembers being so many little things that she didn't know about and wasn't taught, like book clubs, grading, communicating with families, and setting up a grade book. The fourth question was, did you feel confident and prepared after your first few weeks of teaching? The teacher of 
20 or three years, said after the first quarter, maybe. She felt like she had it under the wraps. She knew the expect expectations for the whole third grade team and knew how they wanted things done. She made sure to sit in at every grade level planning meeting and asked hundreds of questions, and it helped, us out, helped her out tremendously. The teacher of 20 years said she would say after the first semester, her confidence grew. Next, I asked them how did they feel about most new teachers now, and what is one area that they see new teachers struggle with the most. The teacher of three years says that she says that the new teachers have a deer in headlights look because that was her. She said, no one can truly prepare you for the first day in a classroom until it happens. I feel that I see new teachers always struggle in the classroom management portion of teaching. I work with a first year teacher now, and sometimes it takes an aide or a special ed teacher to come in and save her from the kids amping each other up or taking over the classroom. The teacher of 20 years says that new teachers excite her. They come with new passions and new technology and new ideas. They're a breath of fresh air. But she sees first year teachers struggle the most with the idea of reality versus fantasy. They don't have a true reality of what it's going to be like, and they also struggle with classroom discipline. I then asked them, do you think experience has helped you become a more effective teacher? Both of them said yes, hands down. The teacher of three years says that she felt more confidence this year than she did last year. She felt like last year she was getting her feet still wet, but she didn't fully know what she was doing. She felt good at the end of her first year, and it set the standard for her third year. She could have hit the ground running. I have higher expectations for myself, and I'm not afraid to try new things. Then I asked them, would you say your student teaching experience was effective or helped you prepare fully for student teaching? The teacher of three years says, yes, my first semester of a general education teaching placement was so eye-opening. She was terrified, but her supervisor said, it's sink or swim. I had to do everything on my own and help me get on, help me get the feeling of being a real teacher. The teacher of 20 years says, looking back, it wasn't long enough or diverse enough. Plus, my student teaching classroom supervisor was older than me and close to retirement at the time. Wow. You know, I noticed that out of the plethora of questions you asked, both educators had very similar answers, even though they had taught nearly 20 years apart, uh, which is kind of eye-opening to me. Um, and so the one thing I guess I would take away from that is that both teachers feel as if they learned more by doing, kind of what you were saying. Correct? Am I correct in that statement? Right. And also, um, both said that they see first-year teachers struggle with classroom management and discipline, which I think that's just one area where you really just have to try things out to see if they work. No one can ever really prepare you for it. And they believe that where they grew the most was by doing and through basically getting thrown into the career itself. They learned more from the student teaching as opposed to the instruction that they learned in their courses. And then the final issue is that most first-year teachers find themselves working in urban or rural areas directly out of college. Urban schools do require a more understanding of different backgrounds, races, etc. simply because of the population that they serve in the school. They require an entirely different approach to teaching because of the diversity found there. Most urban schools are poverty and have trouble keeping teachers because of the lack of resources or negative student behavior that are primarily found there, etc. Indiana does not currently require student teaching in any certain area being suburban, rural, um, any of those. Because of this, most student teachers may not teach in urban areas. But then, when they get hired in an urban school, they are completely taken off guard and feel unprepared to teach and in the long term could quit. We need teachers in urban areas, and we need teachers to be prepared to teach in them. Even if a teacher wouldn't ever teach in an urban school, the amount of management techniques and experience they would gain in the classroom student teaching in one would be immense and worth it. Right, definitely. So are there any existing reform efforts that are similar to yours, and have they had any impact on the issue, or have they had the opportunity to fix it? Funny you should ask that. What's really interesting about student teaching is that it's barely been reformed in the American education system. The more research that I did, the more I was kind of shocked that there's really no set in stone timeline of how student teaching reforms have been taking place that I could find. 
In the article, Historical Overview, International Perspective, authors Edward R. Durcham and Mary Kay Durcham discuss the history of teaching education in America. Formal teaching education actually began in the 1820s with the creation of what were called quote-unquote norm schools. These schools were designed to prepare teachers to teach. In the article, a description of norm schools were given by Robertson Davies in the book The Solderton Trilogy. He describes the schools as schools where teachers taught more of a trade, basically how to draw, make hangings, drawing with wax crayons, etc. But by the 1940s, most of these norm schools had split into four-year teachers' colleges, and then into the 60s and 70s, these teachers' colleges split into state universities. During the time of the norm schools reforming, teacher preparation programs began to be put into place. Student teaching first started out as something that occurred only in the last year of the teaching program. But then in the 60s, the program began adding early teaching experiences throughout the first four years of a person attends college. In 1986 and 1990, the Holmes Group argued that there should be a professional development schools um, where pre-service teachers would attend and be under the guidance of other developed teachers. This kind of reminded me of student teaching but this would be for several years. This is actually the most like my reform in being that the what intent was on mentor teachers guiding and mentoring future teachers for longer periods of time. Right, definitely. So why don't you now discuss your reform efforts? All right. So across the board, Indiana has specific requirements that students must adhere to in order to complete the student teaching process. I know they're out there, but I have searched the entire internet looking for this information. I've asked professors, current student teachers, and reviewed my own student teaching packet and orientation guide online through Ball State, being that I student teach next fall. But still, I could not have found this information. Yet another issue. I do know, however, the process could look different depending on where you get your degree. For example, found on the Ball State website. There explains the process that is unique to Ball State as well as Purdue, Butler, and IU. They are the only schools in Indiana that require a performance-based portfolio assessment called EdTPA to be completed in order to get an education degree. It's unique to these schools and it is not required by the state yet. One of the biggest aspects of my reform is that the existing 10-week requirement for student teaching in the state of Indiana be completely reformed, increasing from 10 weeks to at least 360 days. The law in Indiana state schools must be in session for at least 180 days each year. Thus, yes, my reform is stating student teachers should be required two years student teaching before being allowed to be a licensed teacher, and one of these years needs to be done student teaching in an urban school. Wow, so that seems like a long time, Abby, no? <laughs> Teachers are more effective with the more experience they have. We've seen an underlining issue with first-year teachers over the years saying they don't have enough experience or they feel unprepared or overwhelmed for the job. Hey now, I've never heard anything about that. My mama told me she loved her first year of teaching and her students thrived. Look at me, I'm a product of her homeschooling. <laughs> yeah. There is plenty of evidence and research that has been done to support my claim of first-year teachers being highly inexperienced and not prepared for the job. As mentioned above, in the book, Supporting Beginning <laughs> Teachers, Brian Goodwin weighs out different struggles of first-year teachers. Research from the book indicates that behaviors and student achievement are significantly worse during the first-year teacher's classroom and does continue, though, to get better in teachers' second- and third-year classrooms. In the article, Does Teaching Experience Increase Teacher Effectiveness? Tara Keeney and Ann Podolowski review 30 studies published between the years 2000 and 2015, analyzing the effect of teaching experience on student outcomes. After reviewing, the authors found that teaching experience is positively associated with student achievement gains throughout a teacher's career. And the more experience a teacher has, the more likely their students are to perform positively, positively perform test scores and on measures above and beyond so i am hearing that first year teachers struggle but what exactly do they struggle at elaborate on that well in the paper a comparison of beginning and experienced teachers concerned 
by Stephen A. Milnick and Dennis, or Denise G. Meister at Penn State University. Describe first-year teachers struggle with the following 15 things from greatest to least, and this was based on evidence. Classroom discipline being one, then motivating students dealing with individual differences, assessing student work, relations with parents, organization of classwork, insufficient materials and supplies, dealing with problems of individual students, heavy teaching load resulting in insufficient preparation time, relations with colleagues, planning of lessons and school days, effective use of different teaching methods, awareness of school policy and rules, determining learning levels of students, and then tied for 15th were knowledge of subject matter, burden of clerical work, and relations with principals and administration. This could all be because they don't have proper experience in their college years to help prepare them. Wow. There are many areas that student teachers struggle in, it sounds like. Uh, I am aware that currently student teaching in the state of Indiana is an unpaid internship, correct? Yes. So will our future teachers get paid to student teach for these two years like your reform proposes? That is a long time without any pay. Yes. Another piece to my reform is that the two-year student teaching requirement would be paid. Students constantly are finding themselves at the end of their student teaching program ready to teach, but they just don't have the funds to pay for it. Student teaching, yes, is involved or is in fact a part of the tuition that a college student pays. However, student teaching is a long process that is an internship. Students are required to be at the school for long periods of a time, most likely having to drive long hours to get to the school itself and then to drive home. According to a groundbreaking survey, Good Call's author, Candace Tomage, suggests that more than 60% of U.S. students would have ran out of money within their first semester. And a blog on the College Marketing Group's website found that the average monthly income for college students is roughly $1,200 a month. Most students have to work during college to pay for tuition, books, fees, rent, groceries, gas, etc. Can't student teachers just work during student teaching? Well, they could, but I wouldn't suggest that. Student teachers are held to the same standards as teachers themselves as they should be. Teachers teach an average of six to seven hours of instruction each day. Therefore, student teachers are required that as well. Along with simply being in the classroom each day and observing for at least 30 hours each week, student teachers are also required to lesson plan and carry out their own lessons, meaning student teachers could be looking at well over 40 hours of unpaid work each week. The hours of student teaching, then, may force students to get jobs after school working into late hours each week. Thus, student teachers may be extremely less effective due to lack of sleep, causing them to be able to learn less from their mentor teacher. It's also no question that lack of sleep has a negative impact on everyday life. According to the U.S. National Library of Medicine and the National Institutes of Health, lack of sleep affects our performance because it directly affects our attention. Our attention becomes erratic when results which results in an unstable attention and work ability. Stress from the lack of money and sleep deprivation often leads student teachers into unstable work. If student teaching was a paid part of the teaching process, student teachers wouldn't feel the pressure to get a job during student teaching and thus would have more time to properly student teach and give their all to their internship. This would allow them to learn more and be more efficient. The goal of student teaching is to become an effective teacher by working under already effective teachers. And our student teachers need to be in the best mindset to become the most effective that they can be. Paying student teachers during the student teaching process would rid of the money stress that students have during their college years. We should be doing all we can for these students during the student teaching process because it's such a critical time for our future teachers to perfect their practice. I got you. So let me get this straight. You're telling me you want students to go to school for four years to complete the required courses and work and then spend another two years of student teaching. I don't think that's going to go over too well with many people. No. Part of this reform is also reforming older requirements as well. Although it varies from school to school across Indiana, most college education programs are four-year bachelor degrees with the most with the school requiring a set amount of core classes, like your basic math, English, science, um, writing courses, etc. Usually this totals to be roughly one year of instruction. This is something most schools cannot change, and I'm not arguing that they should. 
If students studying education are spending one out of the four years taking core classes, this means they're spending three and a half years taking courses related to education and then the remaining semester student teaching. I'm reforming the last two years. I would like to see schools only require the basic core classes for one year and then require 36 hours of coursework in the education program. It would total one year, which is two semesters, requiring students to take 18 hours of coursework related to the education program. Each semester would be 18 hours long if they wanted to graduate in four years. It would be a rigorous program. However, teaching is a rigorous, hardworking job that our future teachers are unaware of until they get into teaching itself. So you want a four-year program to be broken into three different chunks. Is that correct? Yes. So one year is for core classes. One year is for classes related to the education program. And then the last two are for student teaching with one year in an urban school. Correct. Say you have a teacher who really isn't teach sure teaching is for her, but she feels she's way too far into the student teaching program to quit. Like say she's in her last year and she's getting ready to student teach. She finds herself student teaching and then she quickly realizes this is not what she signed up for. With my reform, the student would have found out after completing two years into the program, beginning her third year into the program where she would start her student teaching and she would realize this isn't for her. This reform would give students a better indication of how much work teachers truly put in because they're gaining the experience early on and over a two-year span. In fact, teachers are more effective the longer they teach and even more so during their first three years of teaching and on. Having teachers student teach within their first two years or having students student teach their last two years of college would allow teachers to gain a better understanding of the rigorous work that a teaching career requires. It would avoid teachers quitting after their first year of teaching and would hopefully help the statistic that states that 40% of teachers will quit within their first five years of teaching. Wow. So that's perfect, Abby. That sounds, that sounds great. So what kind of timeline are you looking at for impl implementation of your reform? Due to the coronavirus outbreak and all that going on, student teachers have been asked to leave that were teaching for the spring course of 2020. And although it hasn't been an issue with certification, because Indiana requires at least 10 weeks of student teaching be done, and the students have actually just hit that 10-week mark, it's still unaware of what it will look like for the fall of 2020. I believe this is the perfect time to begin to look at all the qualifications needed to become a certified teacher in Indiana. It's the perfect time to begin to look deeply into the statistics of first-year teachers and start to look at ways to help our first-year teachers instead of putting them at a disadvantage. I think the sooner we reform the educational college teaching programs, the better. The reform would definitely have to take place at the start of a new school year, though. Great. So what kind of resources do you need in order for your reform to be successful? The biggest thing that we need right now is for all administration, colleges, and schools across the board be down for this. It needs to be a statewide requirement for all te Indiana teachers. We can't have one college doing it and one college not. It would require more from the schools themselves as well. Mentor teachers would need to be okay with having a student teacher for a year as opposed to one semester that they may have had years prior. It would be important for mentor teachers to be highly effective so students can learn the most. More likely, most likely, more teachers and schools would have to be on board with accepting student teachers. There would be way more teachers student teaching every year with this reform than there are currently, but I believe that if we have highly effective teachers taking the time to mentor younger pre-service teachers, we will see an increase in teacher effectiveness, especially in the first few years of teaching, which, as a state, we say we strive for. Having a student teacher is a huge commitment because student test scores influence teacher evals. Some teachers refuse to take student teachers. One possible fix to this is to have principals or mentor teachers evaluate the student teachers themselves and then somehow have their evaluation be a factor into the overall teacher's eval as long or as well with the student's test scores. Also, most likely, more urban schools would have to be on board and would have to be willing to accept multiple student teachers too. It could get tricky if some urban schools do not have enough highly effective or experienced teachers. 
and there may need to be some other requirements waived in the Department of the Urban Schools. The last resource that we would need for this to happen is simply money. It may be best for teachers to only be paid for one of the two years of student teaching if it is more in the budget, but ultimately in a perfect world, each year would be paid for. It would also possibly be best for the schools themselves to pay for these student teachers, almost as if they're fully employed at the school. I believe pre-service teachers would feel more motivated to be effective during the student teaching process if they knew they were being paid for or possibly kicked out if they didn't meet the certain requirements. Great. That's awesome. Uh, before we wrap up, do you have any additional comments or concerns that you would like to address with our listeners? Overall, I think there are just plenty of benefits if student teaching was required to your program and it was paid and one year was being at an urban school. The biggest would be that the more experience they have, the better he or she is when they enter their own classroom, ultimately. And they would feel more prepared when they enter them as well. I truly believe pre-service teachers, if pre-service teachers had ample opportunities in the classroom to observe effective practices and test out their own, they'd be more effective their first year teaching. Also, by student teaching for a year in an urban school, teachers can benefit greatly. They learn how to toss away stereotypes they may have about cultured or poor students, learn to connect with their community around them, how to connect with diverse students, and how to teach them. And all these traits would be beneficial to teachers in general, even if they don't end up at an urban school. And all teachers need to learn how to deal with diversity in classroom management. Well, that is awesome. Thank you so much for joining us on our podcast. We hope everyone out there enjoyed this, uh, this amazing guest with us. She's going to be a great educator. Thank you very much, Abby. Thank you.